All right, so like I said, I wanted to kind of outline uh, biblically the motivation to reach our community, and now we're going to get into um, HCV's best ideas and practices. Okay, these are our best ideas and practices to experience baptism, to see the baptisms that we've had over the last three years, 500 plus. Now remember, all of you have index cards. Very important. This is our community. We're reaching our community. This is what God is doing through us. But God is going to download to you ideas of you reaching your community. Right? What are things that we can do to reach our community? And you've got to, as leaders, gather together and bring these ideas together and begin to put them into practice. Remember, if there's not change, nothing changes. Right? So you have got to begin to be so intentional in what God downloads you to you today that you bring it to the whole church and you begin to steer the church then into these new experiences, into these new, this new change that truly reaches out to the community. So the first one is this. Hub City Vineyard, best ideas and practices. Number one, tie-dye t-shirts. <laughs> tie-dye t-shirts, right? The Hub City Vineyard is known as the hippie church. I shared that last night. We got known as the hippie church because we, in our very first year of planning the church, we served the cold weather shelter, we, we uh, brought homeless karaoke, we had karaoke, we had fun, we engaged the residents. Now listen to this, listen to this, remember that was year one. Two years ago, our local reach cold weather shelter implemented changes to how they serve the cold weather shelter. Now, every church that serves at the cold weather shelter, which our church serves two weeks now, we serve two weeks there, full weeks, like where we, we serve, we cook food. We, now, every church that volunteers at the Reach Cold Weather Shelter has to have a hospitality team. And that hospitality team has to have dinner with the residents, reaching out to them, sharing Jesus. How did that happen? Because we were obedient to what God called us to do. We, were, we had homeless karaoke. We got labeled the hippie church. And we have fully embraced it. We have fully embraced it. When people label you the hippie church, think about it. You now have tie-dye t-shirts, okay, with our logo, with a tagline, come as you are on the back. And everywhere you go, if you walk through media wearing this shirt, are people going to take notice? Darn right they are. Yeah, they'll take notice. I mean, I cannot tell you time and time and time again where I've had families come up to me and say, what's that shirt all about? Like, I love it. Well, let me tell you, right? Let me tell you what it's about. I pastor this church called Hub City Vineyard. We'd love for you to be there, and, and, and we just invite them. And there's not a person in our community of faith that doesn't have one of these shirts. Every, every like, I think it's, it's once a quarter, we do a shirt order, and, there, and there's 100 plus shirts ordered every quarter. And we, 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 it got to the point where we actually bought our own, uh, uh, what's this called? Printing press. Printing press. Yeah, we have it in our basement. We make our own shirts now. Because <laughs> we were paying so much for someone else to do it. We found a printing press for $3,000, bought it, and now we do it ourselves. So we make shirt after shirt after shirt, and we send them out on people. Why? Why do we do that? Because people know us. Every evangelism outreach, people are wearing these shirts. We are known as the hippie church, and we embrace it. So number one, we, we wear these shirts. We've embraced what God has called us. Now, granted, may, you're not called the hippie church, but that doesn't mean you can't make shirts that don't reach your community, that aren't vibrant, that, aren't, that, that people desire to have. I mean, we have people that want our shirts that aren't even in our church. We're like, sure, here you go, I'll have one. Now, now let me warn you, though, okay, you have to guard against people that do, you do give your shirts to. Because my wife, very outward thinking, this one guy, he was, he was a part of the cold weather shelter. He was coming to our church on Sunday mornings. He wanted a shirt, right? So Jess gave him a shirt. Well, on Wednesday of that week, we found him in the town square waving a Confederate flag, yelling at, at, at cars driving by, wearing our shirt. So you have to, <laughs> I said, Jess, I probably, she goes, I just wanted him to feel loved. I said, yeah, but you got to use a little wisdom when you're giving our shirts out, okay? Because we don't want, so anyway, but that, that's your tie-dye t-shirts, why we wear them, why we put them out, people associate with us. Number two, free car magnets and decals, right? We now take our tie-dye and we made magnets, car magnets, 
that people get and put on their cars. I cannot tell you time and time and time again of the people that I talk in our community, they go, we see your magnets everywhere. Yeah, yeah because they stick out, right? I mean, when you throw a tie-dye magnet on the back of a car, people are like, what is that? And, and they embrace it and they see it and, it. and it points people, where does it point people? To the church. It points people to the church. We now have a new logo. We've rebranded. Okay, if you could flip to the next slide. This is our new logo, hcv.church. But we still kept the Hub City Vineyard. We're still the Hub City Vineyard, right? But now there's a dot .church domain. We bought that and, and, and we're steering everybody to our website now. So everywhere we go, people see hcv.church, they're plugging it into their phones, they're searching for us. So that means you have to have an excellent website. Our website is top notch. We have, we have videos, that, like people go to our website and there's videos of me preaching, there's live worship, it's all happening. There's kids playing and it's literally, you plug to our website and there's these videos, they're like, wow, I wanna, I wanna be a part of that. It's inviting them in, right? It's inviting them in. You guys are already known as BRV, by the dot church. Real simple, right? Now, another reason that this has been so beneficial to us, because in the, on the East Coast, especially in Maryland, no one knew what the vineyard was. Yeah. We still have people that come to our doors weekly wanting to know when the free wine tasting is. <laughs> every week, every week, there's people that show up to our front door. I didn't know there was a winery in town. This is great. We're like, yeah, Jesus loves you. <laughs> So, so believe it or not, we, we're not eliminating Hub City Vineyard. That's who we are. It's, who, it's a church we plant in. But now people recognize and it scream. What's it scream? We're a church. Like they know that Hub City Vineyard is a church now. So it eliminates any confusion. It eliminates people thinking that we're, a, that we're selling wine. And people recognize and see that's a church right? That is a church. I want to be a part of it. Oh, Hub City Vint. Now I see tie-dye, hippie. See, it all goes back to that just living out who we've become, all right? Living out who we've become. Number three, tiki bar welcome. That's right. Our welcome center is a tiki bar. We went to the store, we bought a tiki bar, and, and we put our tie-dye and logos, logos all over it. And you say, well, Chris, how does that help with reaching lost people, with reaching people that are connecting them that are outside the church? Who doesn't like walking up to a tiki bar, right? I mean, let's be honest. Let's just be honest. It makes it safe. Does that make sense? It makes it safe. It makes it fun. It makes it inviting. People walk up, like outside of our front door, we take our tiki bar outside every week. And we have a big sign on top of our tiki bar that says, new here, with a question mark. And immediately, as people are walking up to the front door, they're thinking, oh, I'm new. And, but their mind isn't, oh, I wonder what they're going to ask me. Their mind is, that's a tiki bar. I want to go stop by there. Right? It just makes it safe and inviting for people that normally don't go to church. And you have to realize that we are called to break down religious walls. We're called to break down religious walls. Oh, well, you can't have a tiki bar in church. Friends, listen to this. We have been accused by other churches in our community that our church is growing so fast because we serve beer on Sunday mornings. <laughs> and, and let me tell you where it came from. So every Father's Day, every Father's Day, we do something creative, right? Three years ago for Father's Day, we bought a root beer keg. Root beer, root beer keg. I mean, the top-notch root beer, like the stuff when it comes out of the tap, man, it's like, woo! And then we bought the, uh, we bought orange HCV cups, so that every dad got a cup, and then walked up to the, the root beer keg and poured a cup of root beer at all of our gatherings, right? Now, people around the community, they thought our keg was, they thought we were actually serving beer, and they were, they were, oh, well, that church is growing because they serve a keg of beer on Sunday mornings. I was like, yeah, we served a keg of root beer. And it was a way of what? Connecting dads, men, to come to our church. Now, hear me out here. I know there's a lot of women here. Our church targets men. Our church targets men. 
And we do things that are geared towards men because if we believe that men come to the church, guess what? Whole families come to the church. So we do, we do, in targeting men, we have a Jersey Sunday, the first day of football season. Kickoff Sunday, it's real simple. Jersey Sunday, wear your jersey. Now, chances are a lot of them are gonna be green and silver here. But, I mean, you wouldn't be able to have Jersey Sunday, you gotta have Eagle Sunday, right? Uh, that's kinda sad, though. That's sad, man. No, because listen, part of the fun of Jersey Sunday, because you have to recognize in Maryland, we have Redskins fans, Steelers fans, and Ravens fans all in our church. Part of the fun is jabbing each other, right, and poking fun. You're all wearing your jerseys. And you say, well, how does that identify with women? We encourage women to, A, wear a jersey or wear something that you identify with. Like if, you're a, if you like crocheting, wear your, wear your blanket. Like... <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? Like, like wear your sweater that you made. Wear your sweater. Or if they work on cars. Or work on cars, yeah, or whatever, you know, whatever it is you do. So we try to build that bridge that it's not just male, but that anybody can wear anything, you know, to, to have fun and to be a part of Jersey Sunday. What does that have to do with the Tiki Bar Welcome? It creates, it creates an environment where we break down religious walls. Does that make sense? Root beer kegs. Uh, Jersey Sundays, people feel like they can come there and just be themselves. That is huge, right? And, and what is that? It's being intentional. We're intentionally reaching out to our community, giving them opportunities to come, to be themselves, and to experience Jesus in a safe environment. Number four, two accessible, high-energy, invite-friendly series is rock anthems and Sunday morning matinee. Okay, Sunday morning matinee. We do these two series every year. Every year. Same name, never changes, same thing. Every June we do rock anthems, and it's intentional. What is rock anthems? Rock anthems incorporates local musicians and bands that are typically not a part of our community of faith. We invite them to play one rock anthem after our morning worship that is then followed with an outward message on on the song, lyrics, band, and Jesus. Our stage and environment is geared towards a live arena feel that a person would experience during a rock show. There is not a year that goes by where individuals and families give their lives to Jesus. So remember I told you I dressed up as Kiss? We, four years ago, we did I Wanna Rock and Roll All Night, live. And I broke down every stereotypical wall that the church has built that Kiss means Kings and Satan service. <laughs> And it was the most powerful Sunday morning. People still talk about it. I literally dressed on the front side as, as Kiss. And then on my back side, my action steps, I took makeup remover and peeled it off and talked about how we need to get rid of the masks. And there was people in tears. And we played I Want to Rock and Roll All Night before I preached the message. And you say God can't move. Right Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. We've lost families over this series. I'm just being honest. We've lost families over this series because they could, well, that's, that's from the devil. You're bringing the devil into the church. There's no place for that. I'm just like, well, there's not a year that goes by that someone gives their lives to Jesus. Last time I checked, Paul used an unknown God to point people to Jesus. And the last time I checked, rock and roll is a God of our culture. So how's it any different? Right? How's it any different? We need to get over our religious mindset and our religious thinking if we want to see people outside of the church come into a relationship with Jesus. And we need to do whatever it takes takes so a couple could you flip to the next slide these are our, our our banners rock anthem series hub city vineyard you see the guitar pick that series we actually gave away guitar picks to everyone in the crowd so we create banners where people see and can experience what's happening can you go to the next one last year we did summer anthems four weeks of hot tunes in jesus so we we've kind of we, we've kind of done a lot of rock songs so we were trying to steer it a little bit more softer. So we brought in some Bob Marley, some Beatles. Uh, we did Johnny Cash. And what else did we do? We did one other song, I don't remember. But we called it Summer Anthem, so we slowed it down a little bit. This year, we're actually going a little bit more different, and we're calling this year's series Playlist. 
and we, and we got giant phones already being made that we're going to put on our stage because everybody has a playlist. So actually, we're going to incorporate very modern, up-to-date hip-hop, country, R&B, and we're going to do our teaching off your playlist, and we're going to try to make it so that everyone gets earbuds, so they're like putting their earbuds in, we play the song, and then I teach about it. Does that make sense? So, so we're very intentional in, in what we do to what? Reach out, right? So Sunday morning nat- matinee, what is Sunday morning matinee? Incorporates recently released movies into our Sunday morning messages. Again, we go all out to create the movie experience. When you walk into our cafe during Sunday morning matinee, it's like you're walking into Regal Cinemas. We get all the posters, we put them up, we have a giant free popcorn machine, we make popcorn the entire month, we give it out, it's buttery, we have soda, I mean, it's, it's literally like you're at the movies. Why? Guests feel like they are walking to a movie cinema every morning. We have found November to be a great time for this series because once a family or individual visits near the holiday season, what are they going to do? They're going to stay because Christmas is three weeks later. It's a natural bridge. Why get them once when we can have them six straight weekends? So we gear for the recently released movies, and and literally they see four clips. We preface it. If you've never seen the movie, you're going to see four clips from this movie this morning. My entire sermon is built on that movie. So some of the movies we've done. Can you flip there for me? Um, We did Mad Max Fury Road, right? We did Mad Max Fury Road. Powerful Sunday. Right? Powerful Sunday. Uh, McFarland, USA, Jurassic World, Tomorrowland. See, we build in these movies and show people. Flip the slide. Uh, Sunday morning matinee, five weeks of Jesus in cinema. Last year I did, uh, what did I do last year that was kind of, oh, Baby Driver. Has anybody seen Baby Driver? Man, that was an incredible movie. And, and again, we preface it. We let people know, look, if you watch this at home, if you watch the full length, you might hear language. I mean, we never do movies that have like sex and stuff like that, but we do, we do do our movies. We just preface it that there is language or violence in it. But, but out of the teaching, again, it's building that bridge for people to connect with culture and Jesus. Now, we're intentional about when we do these series. We do rock anthems every June. Why? Because, because what does church talk about? Summer slumps. HCV doesn't experience summer slumps. We don't. We're intentional. We, we gear our high-energy, invite-friendly series is in June so that July and August is not a summer slump. It's people continuing to come because of the buzz of the series, right? November, we do Sunday morning at Nay. Why? It's a huge invite series. And then we have found that people that come during Sunday morning matinee, they stick through December because Christmas is coming and they're going to go to church on Christmas anyway. And, and, and it's just been such an outreach and connection to people so, so that they can relate to what God is doing in their life. But again, what are we? We're intentionally reaching out. Now, some of the other series that we've done. Do we have other slides of our series? Every series, we do monthly series. Listen, we do monthly series. I plan our monthly series, me and the staff and our creative team, we plan our yearly calendar of series every November. So in November, we have a complete outline of all 12 series that we're going to do. That enables our creative team to think creatively about our posters, and it enables our people to reach out and invite. Look, we did a series about the Holy Spirit in October. What do we call it? Ghost Stories. Why? Because people relate to it. They think, oh, it's Halloween. Oh, I get it. Oh, I want to come check that out. Ghost stories. Yeah, it's all about the Holy Spirit. Hungry heart, right? We took a local artist that is in our church. We had him create the banner, right? And people identify with that and they think, wow, that's really cool. What's that about? Right? So we create these posters and, and, and make them creative so that people question in their minds, I wonder what that is all about. And it's all about being hungry for God. Next. In this issue, take me to your leader. So we did a, right? Yeah, we did an alien thing. And in our alien thing, like we literally, our creative team created UFOs. We had them in our sanctuary flying all around. They like had lights and stuff. It was very comic bookish, right? But people relate to it. What was it? What was this series all about? Pointing people to Jesus. Who was our leader? 
right? And, and, and throughout the whole series, I steered people into a relationship with God. Wireless. Does anybody want to guess what that series was about? Prayer. Communicating with God, right? But, like, if I would have wrote prayer on there, people would be like, oh, okay. Be honest, right? All of a sudden, we call our series wireless. People begin to think technology. They think communication. But then we steer that in. What does communicating to God look like? Right? So again, it's, it's outward reaching. Isn't Mark an artist? That's what I thought. See that? I mean, we got to inspire him. Isn't Mark? Um, we, put them, we put them in our lobby so that when people are walking in, we put them on our Facebook page. Like we have a Facebook page that has almost 2,000 people in it, and it becomes our headline. We, we create um, six-pack invite cards with those on it that we give to our people to invite to the next series. Not every series, just like very, very invite-friendly series is. So, so that image becomes the invite tool to bring people in. Does that make sense? I think there's one more, right? Oh, there's two, sweet. This is the one we just ended, right? Notice, private parts. What's it a series about? Sex, sex yeah. Look, a series about sex, relationships, and God's best, right? But again, private parts, everybody thinks, uh, what's everyone think? Howard Stern, right? Oh, didn't he write a book called Private Parts? Yeah, he did. But we want to look at God's best for your relationships, for sex, and what that means in your life, right? And, and we did it. We went through Song of Solomon. It was an incredible, son. It was an incredible month. Actually, it's finishing this weekend for us. John, my assistant, is preaching the last message of it. But the first two I did, um, week one, week one was attraction. What does attraction between two people look like and how godly qualities actually should attract the people that you're supposed to be with? Week two was godly sex, and I broke down what godly sex is. And we got down and dirty. I actually create, we created a slide that said PG and it flashed up and I, and I welcomed our parents. I said, look, this message has parental guidance. If your kids are sitting here, go check them in to HCV kids because we're going to talk about sex and they're going to maybe hear something that you don't want them to hear. And I was honest, right? It was, it's been our largest Sunday in the last six weeks. <laughs> Think about it. Think about people, when, wait a minute, sex and God? You mean, I mean, they're, they're, I, I've talked to our people in our church and they're like, wow, I gotta go and check that series out. I never knew a pastor could talk about sex on a Sunday morning. It's like it creates a buzz in the community because, and this is what I say to our people, you're gonna hear about it. Why wouldn't you wanna hear it about from a godly perspective? You can't turn the internet on, the radio on, or your TV without being what? Bombarded with sex. So why not know what godly sex is? So that's been a huge series for us. And the last one. Christopher, Christopher, you get over here. You get over here now, Christopher, come on. But I don't want to. It's not about you. Come on, Christopher. It's about God. It's about God in us. God wants to use us. And it doesn't matter. Oh, you look so cute. Your bunny ears, your bunny bow tie. What a cute bunny. It's Easter Woo! at the vineyard. And this year, we will celebrate our Easter gatherings at South Hagerstown High School. That's right. We will have a 7 a.m. Easter sunrise service and two gatherings in the auditorium, one at 9 and the other at 11. That's right. And for the 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock service, we have a terrific kids program. So invite your friends and your family to attend with you. The focus of this year's celebration will be on how Jesus brings freedom into our lives. Awesome. And you know there's somebody in your life right now that needs to hear this message. So invite them to Easter. And don't forget, come as you are. Woo! Okay, now look, now look. Some people say, you know, some people say, they're, oh, that's cheesy. <laughs> it is. Right? Now listen, it is. It's cheesy. It, and remember what I talked about, being a fool for Christ, right? <laughs> being a fool for Christ. Now listen to this. Listen to this. True, this, tr this is true. That video, we, we shared it strictly on the internet, got over 8,000 views. 8,000 people, over 8,000 people watched that cheesy video. And, we, and don't get me wrong, we upgraded it on Facebook so that it went to people that are friends of friends of friends, like you pay, we paid a little extra. 8,000 people watched that video. For our Easter gatherings, we rented a high school 
right, with a 750-seat auditorium, we had over 1,600 people at last year's Easter gatherings. 1,600 people, right? And, and you have to recognize and realize God uses these things, right? They identify with us that it's not about being proud. It humbles us to make them relate to us and connect to us, that, it's, that I'm not some preachy guy that's all about their money. And, and, and no, if you're going to reach the lost, you got to make it comfortable for them to be here. Right, you got to make it comfortable, and you got to recognize and, and and make it fun. Like that's fun. It's cheesy. It's fun. It's like wow, I want to go to that. That's neat. I've never seen an Easter invite like that. So so how can you do that? Right? How does Blue Root Vineyard reach out? How does Blue Root Vineyard do that? It's all about your series. Is it's all about creating series. Excuse me, that people can be invited to. Okay. Any any questions there? Before I move on for that, any questions? Yeah. Okay, sure. Does anybody have any questions before I move on? I'm about halfway through these points. Okay. I'll tell you what, if you got any questions, come around here. So I'm running around the audience. Anyway, I'm really excited. This is awesome. But I wonder how you do it because, I mean, you have to have an awesome team. And Mark has an awesome team. Yeah. But we need more because that's like a lot of stuff. Like for me, like that creativity team, Yeah. that was like the key that I think we need in a sense yeah, totally. but how exciting can you talk about that a little bit how what's the creativity, the creativity team yeah so basically basically i get a local i get a local artist who does our um who oversees our art shows oversee she's just like she thinks artistically right i get i get um our staff person together i get i get certain staff people together i get my wife i get my assistant um i get our video guy that, that he's the head, our video guy uh, oversees all the um, uh, website design for the National Park Service. So he's a very smart web guy. He knows technology. So I get us all together, like six of us, and we just sat there and, and just take a whole afternoon and brainstorm, okay, God, what do you have for Hub City Vineyard in 2018, right? And then we just throw out topics Right, so what we do is we list 12 topics. Okay, we feel like God wants us to address these topics. Then, after we have our topics laid out, and, and don't get me wrong, we already know we, we, do, uh, we do Advent every year in December. We do um, uh, Sunday morning matinee. We do rock anthems. Like we, some are already penciled in. Uh, we always do a money series. We always do a relationship series. So there's like five or six that we do every year intentionally because... Culture needs that, right? And then we go back after we have the topics and then we name them. Does that make sense? Then we name them and, and all of the names, as you saw, are geared outwardly. That, that like people can see and think, oh, it's not churchy. We remove all Christianese. We use no church language. We, we, we just make it so that people can identify with it. And it's a total culture shift. Like when I preach on Sunday mornings, you're a follower of Jesus. You're not a Christian. Right, I, I, am, I eliminate Christianese. I, when I talk about prayer, it's talking to God, it's connecting to God, what that looks like. So we've built a culture where it's outward focused and we use our language directed towards those outside of the church. Does that make sense? So that's how we do it. That's kind of like a year worth of planning and then, and then off of that, so then we name them, right? Then we pick three or four series as then we're gonna go big time. Like we did the Sunday punch in, in October. We made a boxing ring. I mean, I had, a, I had the heavy bag and I was hitting it. I came out to Rocky music. I walked up to center aisle in a, um, in a, in a, in a boxing thing. It was awesome. I still have that. Um, so, so we picked three or four where we're going over the top. You know, we go over the top. Sunday morning to matinee, we always do that. Rock anthems, we always do that. Uh, uh, Sunday Punch was a big one. I'm trying to think of other ones that we've done um, that, that's been transformational, like where we just transform the stage. We just, anyway, so, sorry. There's, it kind of all runs together. So does that make sense? Does that help? Okay, Caleb. Hey, um, so I'm assuming there was a time when you guys started to make these kind of culture changes yes. pretty intentionally. Did your worship change? Yes. Talk about that a little bit. Yes, our worship totally changed. Um, uh, we, uh, 
our worship is very, very energy filled and dynamic. Like, and I mean, like, don't get me wrong, we do worshipful songs that are a little bit slower, but we are very dynamic, very energy based. When people come into our Sunday morning, the first thing they think is energy, right? Because when you're doing rock anthems, you're doing that outward focus. When you, when you got Kiss jamming on a Sunday morning, right, our worship kind of takes a different, uh, a, a different spin. So what that looks like is, I mean, it, again, this whole sh- culture shift changed when I got out of that cold water and God said, you're a fool, right? So, so that was intentional. But then our worship, our worship is very directed at encounter-based upward worship that's high energy, very, 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 very high energy, where people come in, and when we talk about celebrating Jesus, we celebrate Jesus. Um, we, uh, we, Rhett's got the biggest team. I think he's got his, we have a large number of people on the stage, probably like eight to 10 people, several electric guitars, uh, drum, keyboards. We got a, 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 a violinist, um, acoustic guitars, drums. So, and then, but once a month we do, or once every other month we do acoustic. So we, we unplug then. Um, but it's, but it's very, very high energy, very high energy. We, we do no vineyard songs and I, I, and I love the vineyard. you know, I love the vineyard. I just, uh, we just, we don't, we don't do any vineyard songs. We do our own songs. I challenge Caleb that needs to write songs. We're getting ready to release our second album. So we have a lot of homegrown songs. We already have one album out. We're making a second one. Uh, yeah, we're doing Vineyard Songs. Yeah, good call. We're doing Vineyard Songs. <laughs> you guys have never heard them, but they are Vineyard Songs. Um, we, do, uh, we do a lot of, we do Hillsong. We do uh, Jesus Culture. We do, a, we do Elevation. We do, uh, uh, what's that band? Um, Sons and Daughters. Is that a band? Yeah, All Sons and Daughters. We do some of their stuff. Um, house, we do Good Good Father, House Fires. So we really do a lot of, of, lot of worship that is high energy because we really firmly believe that when people come in here, if, if it's real slow and dreary, what we found is they just don't get it. They don't get it. They, like, and we try to teach them to the point that when they, when they have intimate worship, what that means. So it's very, uh, it's very, uh, yeah, very high energetic, very upbeat. And, and again, it goes along with our series. I have two questions. Sure. Um, one, I'm curious to know what your population is. Like, are you suburban? Are you near a city? And my question about that is, I hear you have three services. You're looking to have four. Mm-hmm. What do you anticipate as you grow? Are you looking to be in more than one location? Mm-hmm. But I'm curious about your strategy about that. Sure. My second question is, I feel Oh, like hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll forget that one. Okay. All right, that's a big one right there. Okay, so we, Hagerstown, we're, our, our church is in Hagerstown, Maryland. That's our mailing address. Hagerstown is a church of 46,000 people. We are in rural America. We're rural America. We are not in big city America. We're an hour west of Baltimore and Washington, D.C., Okay, we actually have people from four states that come to our church. So if you look at the map of Maryland, we're in the smallest little section of Maryland. So we have people from Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland in our church. Because when we target the tri-state area or the quad area, then our population grows to about 130,000, 140,000 people. So, so we're rural America that can reach a lot of people people okay now with rural america though we're in a very racist community there's a lot of racism in our community it's very it's very outspoken and upfront and in your face so when we're tearing down those walls it's it's we get a lot of backlash for it you know when we're called the hippie church people won't come to our church because we have biracial couples in our church because we have homosexual couples in our church you know, and, and people, oh, you're the hippie church. You don't, I'm like, yeah, we love people, right? And, and so our community is very close-minded, um, very Bible Beltish, almost. Very, very Bible Beltish. So we have a lot of backlash and a lot of fighting with that because we're outward. You know, getting like, oh, you have, you have, you have beer in your church. That's why you're growing. I, people accuse me of not preaching Jesus, <laughs> right? I'm like, wow, okay. Like, like, look at my outline. I'm sorry, but it's all Jesus, 
Um, so our strategy is we have three services. We're looking at a fourth. We're trying to get a bigger building. Uh, we, want to, um, we want to have a site in West Virginia. That's what we're hoping for. But I was telling Mark, I need a catalytic leader that can lead a site. I don't have that yet. So strategically, we'd like to launch a site. I'm not a big site person. I see our site person pastoring that church for a year or two, and then I want it to be a plant. Like, I don't want it to be a site and stay a site. I want to find a person that's catalytic, high energetic, that I can get them out there and make, let them be a site for a year or two that becomes its own church. Like, that's, how, that's my strategy. I want to have a site that becomes its own entity, its own church, and is a church plant. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, good. Number two? Can I take a Yeah, go ahead. Rule breaker. Um, I feel you on the men, targeting men yes. to build a church. And I'm curious to know, do you have women in leadership and how, what kind of roles do they take in your church and yep. how do you function as a team? Yes, um, my wife is on staff. She's full-time. She's the family pastor. Um, we have a full-time learning center um, a woman that's on staff. All of our administrators are, are, are women on staff. We have our, our leadership team, which is approaching 90, 100 people. We don't just have the men come. We have the couples come. So we empower women to lead in our church. We believe that they are called to lead. My wife does preach on Sundays occasionally, um, not a lot because she's very hands-on with the kids and is watching our kids grow and empowering our kids uh, to change. Uh, there, I, just let me be upfront and honest. I don't cross lines. Like women, some women get upset with me because they feel like I'm so man-focused, but I, but I don't counsel women. I won't. I will not counsel women. I will counsel couples, but I will not counsel a woman. They has to go to a woman, and, and that woman has to counsel that woman. I, do, I know myself, you know what I mean? And, and I, know the way my, I know the way I was, and I know my weaknesses before I met Jesus. And I'm not going to put myself in a situation where a woman is feeling connected to me because I, I don't trust myself, I'm being honest. I, I don't trust myself. I could slip up just as quick as anybody. So I'm intentional. So, so some women take that personally, like I don't love them enough and, and, and this and that. And I've heard that before, but I just tell them, I'm like, look, look at these, pe these people. will counsel you, pray for you, and minister to you. It's not that I don't love you. It's just I, I'm not going to cross those lines. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh! And, and you know, I am a fool, but I'm not always a fool for Christ yet. Oh, sorry. Boop. My question is, I'm not sure how to put it, um, all, the, all the excitement and all the pizzazz sounds great, but look, we all can't maintain that level of high. Even, I mean, within the spirit, we all have our down times. How did, has your church, has a church had any downtime? And I guess I'm trying to ask, if you lose all the traditionalism, I mean, I think that's important too. So like, it doesn't sound like there's any blend, you're just all out there. And I, under, I do understand and yet I don't. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. Uh, traditionalism, uh, we, offer, we offer communion every week. Um, we do. We offer communion every week in the corner. People can go and be served communion, be prayed for at any time throughout the service, whether during worship, during my message. I don't care. Like, I believe in communion. I think it's important, okay, I, and I value it. Once a month, 12 times a year, we do corporate communion where the whole church does communion. I teach about it. I lead people into a relationship with Jesus through it. It's very empowerful and empowering to people. Uh, of course, we do baptisms. Some ch churches have eliminated baptisms. You know, so that's, that's culture, that's traditional, that's, that's very evident. I mean, look around. I know vineyard churches that do like one baptism a year, and they have five people, right? And, and, and I'm sorry, that's, a, that's culturally relevant. What did Jesus tell us to do? What did he commission us to do? He said, he said baptize people, and he, and he said, share communion, right? So we're doing what is traditionally Jesus. I mean, in my, in my understanding of the Bible, okay? We're not a hymn church, we're not an organ church, we're not a pew church, um, and that's just who we are. As far as excitement and energy, I'm a coach. I mean, 
And, and I empower people to experience life change. I'm a motivator, right? That's my role. That's my gift mix. I'm not a big counselor. I do it, but it's begrudgingly. I don't get energy from it. I get energy seeing life change and seeing people motivated. So does it take a lot of work? Yeah, it does. My wife and I are going on a cruise in May because I had hit a patch back in the fall and winter where I was emotionally empty. I was emotionally... Okay, sorry. So does that answer your... Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it happens. It happens. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, so on the question of reaching, targeting, so to speak, yes, men, yes. Well, what do you do with the backlash that's going to come from that where you'll be accused of being sexist or if you target minorities, you'll be accused of being racist because um, the whole thing for me, one of my mantras is that it's all about the us-them line and even like seek and save the lost can be a Christians versus non-Christians thing. What do you do with all the divisions and all the accusations that you'll get? Like even the label hippie church, someone would be like, oh, well, they're liberal. And then that's an evil thing. Yeah. And how do you handle those labels and those divisions? I just, for, for the existence of the church, people know that I'm not political. I don't do politics. If you make a political Facebook post on our page, it's immediately deleted. If it's an agenda-driven post on our Facebook page, it's immediately deleted. Um, I don't address I don't address politics, I don't open that door, I don't even go there, right? Because it, it just invites people to separate and to have their agendas and to be a part of a political party. People know that I'm an independent, I'm not Republican or Democrat, I believe there needs to be more independence so that something actually changes in our political system. I don't vote Democrat or Republican and people know that because I feel that the only way our political system is gonna change is when a third party actually gets credible votes, okay? So people know that. And, 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 and they understand that. As far as uh, sexism, um, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. You know, I don't, I've never been accused of being, you know, l like a sexist, I guess you can say. So, um, let me just say, say something about that. Like, no matter what you do, somebody will say, this isn't that other thing. Yeah. The guy's got a vision, and he pursues that vision, and it's working, and, and that's what he's here to share. And I, yeah, yeah and, 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 and to be honest with you, we, we have heard, like, uh, people have invited friends to our church, and they've said, oh, that's, that's a hippie church. I'm not coming to it. Fair enough. And I, I'm like, yeah, okay. we are. It's cool, you know. We actually did a summer series called uh, Summer of Love, and we connected how Jesus is the greatest hippie ever. <laughs> we did, man. It was awesome. It was awesome. Here, let me ask you a question. Yes break right now no i'm fine okay you guys good stand up stretch yeah stretch, stretch yeah your bones stretch a little bit we're gonna sit right back down chris is gonna keep going one minute yeah sure Everybody else sit down. All right, is everybody loose, ready to go? Here we go. Woo, isn't this fun? This is awesome. So good. So good. Okay, hey, I just got asked the question, and God just kind of popped this into my mind. I just got asked the question, wow, this guy has to cost a lot of money, right? When I see this, this has to cost a lot of money. 
our church is not wealthy. Like, we're in rural America. The people we target and reach are not wealthy. I, have, I, I don't even have one doctor or lawyer in my church. Now, don't get me wrong. I've been praying hard for them. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, we are not a wealthy church. But, again, to strategically reach the lost, some things that we do with our building that doesn't cost anything um, we have four recovery meetings a week in our building because 58% of our church is in recovery that costs us nothing other than opening our doors. We have an AA meeting, a Celebrate Recovery meeting, a CA meeting, which is Cocaine's Anonymous, and then, a, and then another AA meeting. So we have four recovery meetings in our church that are constantly meeting every week. Costs you nothing other than a room and coffee. And we supply the coffee, right? All you got to do is open your doors. We, uh, we, we, in, we looked into getting a um, Cub Scout and Boy Scout troop in our building, but it just kind of didn't work out. But again, it's free. Uh, all, it, all it costs you is to open your doors. So, so, you know, when it comes to money, you can do things strategically to build bridges to people that need it. You know, so having a big recovery population in our church, it's natural for us to have recovery meetings. It's actually our goal, my passion, to have a recovery meeting every day of the week in our church. Because we're in a very big epidemic in our community, opioid crisis, where at one point in the fall, there was 58 deaths in one day from opioids in our our little community. So, So we really put it out there that we're a recovery community, and we have those recovery meetings in our church. And you guys can do that right here. All you got to do is open your doors. Um, So number five, moving on, moving on, uh, partnership agreements, partnership agreements. So we have partnership at Hub City Vineyard. Partnership agreements are signed by individuals committing to be a part of our community of faith every year. So every year, the first Sunday in January, we do Partnership Sunday. Our partnership is outward focused, and one of the agreements that our people commit to is this. Devoting myself to partnering with the Hub City Vineyard by inviting and including others from our community to share in the life-changing truth of Jesus. Right? So can you flip the slide? Here's our partnership agreement right here. This is what our people commit to every year. Right? The, the points. And this is what I say to people. If you want to know what a follower of Jesus looks like in the Hub City Vineyard, here you go. Yeah. If you do this... You're a follower of Jesus in our community of faith, actively attending weekend gatherings, engaging Jesus' worship, participating in other yearly community events in the Hub City Vineyard. Doesn't say every, says other. Inviting and including others from our community of faith to share in the life changing truth of Jesus. Connect, right? Our three part philosophy at the Vineyard, Hub City Vineyard, is connect, relate, serve, right? Three simple steps relate. Serving once a month at a weekend gathering, we only challenge our people. We have three gatherings right now, going to add a fourth. All you have to serve is one gathering once a month somewhere. That's it, 12 times a year. Joining a community group that challenges me to grow. We've had our largest growth groups ever this past, uh, this winter. We're up to 24 growth groups, which isn't enough. Our goal is 48, so we're working that way. Prayer becoming a regular practice of my life. Praying for the leadership and partners of the Hub City Vineyard. Uh, Serve. Devoting myself to partnering with the Hub City Vineyard by regular financial support to the Hub City Vineyard. Right? No, no, now listen up. Listen up. That doesn't say tithe. And that's intentional. Right? Do I teach tithing? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. But that's in our next step, which I'll show you in a second. Serving, because I don't want to scare people off. If I put tithing to the vineyard, like, well, I can't do that. I'm not going to partner here, right? People get overwhelmed with money. Serving others with my possessions and talents so the kingdom of God can work within my life and community. Sign and date it. I tell the people, sign and date it. If you sign and date it and you're a partner in our community of faith, take it with you, put it in your Bible, put it on your mirror, put it somewhere where you're showing and reminding yourself what you committed to for the year. That's how we do it. That's our partnership. Okay, now, out of that partnership, move to the next slide, we created our partnership wheel, right? So we had no discipleship track in our community of faith three years ago. So we read Start With Why. Remember I told you that book by Simon Sinek? And we, and we were like, wow, we're really missing the mark. Okay, that book really has transformed our church. 
So, and notice, you see a lot of the why statements. So we created our partnership wheel, right? Start with why happens the first Sunday of every month, 12 times a year at every gathering, right? What is start with why? Start with why is why HCV? Why would you be a part of our community of faith? We tell the story of, of our church, how it came to be, um, how it happens. I, Jess and I filmed a video, so it's a, it, I don't have to be there for it. A staff member leads it. They play the video. They meet Jess and I. I know it's a video, but it's the reality that if you're going to offer it at three gatherings, soon to be four gatherings, I can't be at everyone right? Because I'm getting ready for the next service and these things are going on. They meet in our church office. That's where we talk about, we believe in tithing. What, you know, we lay out what it means to partner at HCV, right? Essentially, it's our um, Vineyard 101. Some people call it, so I don't, I don't know what you guys, do you guys, what do you guys call it? V101. So we call our start with why. We have a giant panel in our cafe with this flower on it that's the size, it's the size of that wall, Seriously, made of wood, hand-carved, beautiful. And what we challenge our people to is, if you're inviting someone, they're wondering how to be a part of the vineyard, right? Here's how you do it. Walk them through the flower, right? It's real simple. Now what happens six times a year? It, it's, it's vineyard 102 or 202, what, what some churches call it. We call it now what? It means how to be a follower of Jesus in a non-religious way, right? It happens on Wednesday nights. It happens a, a month it's four different classes on, on Wednesday nights, and it, and it happens six times a year. It's getting ready to, it, for us, it was, we start, the first one was in January, the second one, yeah, it's coming up this month in March, so six times a year, we do now what? And notice, it builds people, we, you're in start with why, what do we do? We point them to now what? The next now what is here. So we get them people into that. Get in a group. So from now what, we get people into groups. We're really focusing growth groups, Okay, my outline now is being turned into a growth group guide that is on our bulletins every week. So my outline is on one side. You turn to the back side of our, of our bulletin, and there's your growth group guide. So, and that challenged people and entices people, wow, I want to be in a growth group. Look what they're going to be talking about, right? We, our growth groups meet for three semesters a year, uh, fall, winter, and spring. We take the summer off. Right? So get in a group. That's been big for us. And then help others to grow. That's, our, that's the next class. They meet, they meet with the, the staff and me, and that's our leadership training. Right? Our leadership training and what we expect from leaders and how you can lead a group, lead a ministry, um, teach kids, whatever. So that's our step process. What our leaders look like. Can you flip? What is a leader at Hub City Vineyard? What is a leader at the Vineyard? Well, we want our leaders to maintain what our win is. So all of our leaders, the first thing they see is, what is a win at Hub City Vineyard? Any, every time anyone far from God goes to an authentic relationship with Jesus, bang, there it is. They know that if you're going to lead, that's our win. So you're being steered to, that's what you're called to do. We want all of our leaders to aim. We want them to be authentic, intentional, and motivational. Authentic, intentional, motivational. We want them to be authentic. We want them to be inspirational and developmental. We want them to, what, pour into people's lives. We want to see other people's lives change. We want our small group leaders to be pastors, other small groups, praying for people, you know, speaking into their lives so that they become more like Jesus. Intentional. They're proactive, practical, and supportive. If you're a leader in the vineyard, you step in and do whatever needs done. Shit's that simple. If the, if the, if the toilet ne needs clean, clean it, right? It, it's all about being an example of serving others. You've got to be intentional and then motivational, and that was even one of our points that we started with this morning. You've got to be consistent and available. You are looking to motivate people to reach the lost. A leader in our church is motivating people to reach the lost, right? So that is a leader in our community of faith. Has it been big for our church? Absolutely. It's been big. That flower has really, has really allowed our back door to close. And don't get me wrong. We have a, I'll be honest. We have a big back door that I want to be smaller. But when you're reaching the lost, you're going to have that. I mean, it's just that simple. I, and I'm doing everything I can to close it. That's why we're putting such a big emphasis on growth groups. We want everybody flowing into a group. We're steering away from everybody comes to Chris. 
right? Like we're moving through that phase where Chris doesn't know everyone anymore. Chris can't do everything anymore. And we're, and we're trying to point people to leaders and, and care. We actually have Mike T coming in next weekend. Mike Turgiano, he's going to do a training with our leaders of what it looks like to pastor your people, like lay pastoring your people. So we're looking forward to that. So what I'm doing here, we're actually doing next weekend at our church. Okay, uh, number six. Flip slide, please. Teaming with crumpies once a month during our morning gatherings. Teaming with crumpies once a month during our morning gatherings. What is crumpies? Crumpies is crumpies donuts, right? Crumpies donuts is legendary in our community. It's a mom and pop donut shop that is in an alley. And people literally every night, the place is only open from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., line up in an alley to get crumpies donuts. I, I'm not making that up. It's the weirdest thing ever. Remember what I said about our New Year's Eve? We have a donut drop. We don't have a crystal ball. There's literally a giant donut that drops into a cup of coffee in our square. And I'm not making that up. Like, that's how legendary Crumpy's Donuts is. It's crazy. So what do we do? We went to Crumpy's. I now personally know the owner, Max. He's about my age. I know he's going to come to our church one day. Once a month, we buy Crumpy's donut holes and serve them at all of our gatherings. And why do we do that? It's invites, right? Dude, it's Crumpy Sunday. You got to come check it out. We give you Crumpy's donuts. And our people are like, oh, <laughs> okay. Like it, it, it makes it, notice, it's an invite tool every month. Every second Sunday of the month is what? Crumpy Sunday. So everyone knows in their minds, wow, I can invite people to, to the vineyard this week. It's Crumpy Sunday. It gives them a reason to invite, right? Again, creating reasons for people to be outward. That is huge, right? We even go as far as in our welcome bags, there's a coupon for a free Crumpy's Donut, and we just pay it at the end of the month every, every month. You know, just using that tool. All right, number seven, moving on. This is a big one for us. Backpack giveaway. Backpack giveaway. Our annual backpack giveaway has become a huge outreach to our community. Last year, this was from a year ago, we gave away 700 backpacks. In 2017, we gave away 1,047 backpacks to our community, all purchased by our people in our church. Right? And how we do it is this. We partner with our schools, right? We have a connection with our schools. Remember, I'm in, I was an elementary education major. When I planted the church, I was a full-time substitute, so I constantly substituted. People knew me, right? So I've been using those contacts now that in the community, I partner with schools, I email guidance counselors, and I say, hey, we are having a free backpack giveaway. Can you encourage those families that you know are less fortunate to come to it? Every year that we have a backpack giveaway, we do it from 9 to 12 at our building. There is a line that starts at 6 a.m. And why? Because we partner with our schools. Does that make sense? We have a relationship with our schools. Through the backpack giveaway, we also do a um, Thanksgiving giveaway. And what we do for Thanksgiving is we give complete Thanksgiving meals to families in our communities that are in need. How do we find our communities? The schools. The schools, the guidance counselors give us a list of names of people that are on the um, food giveaway list, the free lunch list, the free breakfast list. They, the guide, check this out. The guidance counselors contact those families, let them know that there's a free Thanksgiving dinner available for them, would they like them? They say yes or no. They then give us the list of yes. And then the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we literally have gifts from God lining our hallways. Last year, we gave away 172 complete Thanksgiving meals to families that are in need. How do we do it? We use the schools. It's being outward. It builds a bridge so that people see our church not as we want something from them, but we want to serve them. We want to love on them. My wife now launched a, um, in a local elementary school that's five blocks from our building, she launched what is a good news club, and every Wednesday from 3 to 4.30, she goes into Lincolnshire Elementary School and reaches out to 60 elementary kids, and she preaches Jesus every Wednesday in the school, and the school gives us their free lunches 
after school. We don't even have to supply a snack. Do you see what I mean? So it's, so it's we are partnering with what's already out there. Now, last night, you know, there was a question, oh, that wouldn't happen around here, right? Some principals are skeptical, separation of church and state. It can happen around here. You just have to find a principal that's willing to work with you. Does that make sense? You've got to find the schools. Remember, we partner with schools. The one school, Hickory Elementary School, the guidance counselor, emailed me back this year. It was the first time I reached out to this elementary school. She was like, this is unbelievable. Normally we try to do this with our own students, but 70% of our students are living in poverty. She says, now all of a sudden I can offer this and the students aren't given anything. You're doing it all for us. She couldn't believe it. So we reach the schools that are in poverty, that are in crisis, where, uh, where the... Uh, uh, the project kids, you know, that are in these projects that are troubled kids, that's the schools we reach out to. Like, and, and, the, and the teachers are like, help us. They're like begging for help. And that's who we partner with, and that's how we give these things away. So, so again, it's reaching out into our community. It's being focused on what it means to be a church. It's about God's love, right? We, we're not looking for an agenda. We're looking to serve our community. So we do our backpack giveaway every year, and we do our Thanksgiving outreach every, week, every year, and that's all school partnership. Jess does the Good News Club every Wednesday in the school, right, in the school. All right, uh, number eight, polar bear baptism. Polar bear baptism, that's right, right? What began as a simple servant evangelism, giving away free hot chocolate to, to the polar bears on New Year's Day, now we have a polar bear baptism. Like, I would put on a wetsuit and get in the freezing waters and baptize people. The first winter after, I remember when I got, was Batman, I got in. That next winter, we went down to serve, and two people came up to me and said, I want to be baptized right now. I said, all right, let's do it. Ever since then, fast forward, we started with two, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> started with two, went to five, uh, then we had 12, uh, then we had 24, uh, then we had there was one winter, I was in there for like 38, I was freezing, man. It was, I was in there for like over 30 minutes. And um, I like got out and I was like shaking, you know. Um, but I put that in there because people say, uh, well, why is that a big deal? It sets the tone that we'll do whatever it takes to see people come to Jesus. Like we go above and beyond. Like we just believe in it, and then it sets the tone that we value baptism and that we want to see people not just begin a relationship with Jesus, but make that out. Because I'm telling you, when they get baptized, it's a different level of commitment. Because they, they are coming out in front of everyone and saying, all right, I'm following Jesus, help me. Right? And then it's the church's responsibility to come behind them and encourage them. All right, number nine, moving on. Consistent servant evangelism. Did everyone hear that? Consistent servant, thank you very much. Consistent servant evangelism. Consistent. What that looks like for our community of faith is every month. Every month we have servant evangelism, doesn't matter what month it is, right? Every month. New Year's Eve, we're doing the, the donut drop, we're giving away hot chocolate. Gave away 152 gallons of hot chocolate this past, this past winter. February, we give away free flowers, 300 free flowers for what? Valentine's Day. We just did that. March, coming up, we do our St. Patrick's Day giveaway. We have our florist to make the flowers green. We give away flowers in the square where people are. Uh, Good Friday, we do a Good Friday giveaway. We give away white flowers. What do we do? We invite people to Easter, right? Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. We do a big Mother's Day outreach. We give away Mother's Day flowers, and we give away... Uh, this year, we're giving away pop sockets, hcv.church pop sockets to every mom in our church, right? And we'll get people that come to that to get a free pop socket. That, it's the thing on your phone. The thing that goes on your phone that pops out so you can lean it up. Yeah, there's one right there. Hold it up real high. Right there. It's a round thing that goes on your phone. And you can prop it up, and you can put your fingers in it. It's real convenience. I like it. I have one on my phone because you can put it on your dash and hang it in your car while you're driving. So it's real safe, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so uh, what else do we do for servant evangelism? Uh, there's our flowers. Um, our, our young people uh, do free gift wrapping at Toys R Us. Simple. 
All you're doing is buying gift wrapping. This year, our junior hires were out there wrapping gifts. One lady looked at them and was just like, what do you got? Why are you guys doing that? They're like, oh, we're with Hub City Vineyard. She looked back at them and said, you guys are everywhere. Right? Like, like, and to me, I'm like, that's the best compliment I could have ever gotten, man. High five. I want people to know that about our church. So we do, um, we do gift wrapping. Is that, is that all I have in there? Oh, there's the donut drop. That's when we do the donut drop, 152 gallons of hot chocolate. Glow necklaces are big for us, right? Glow necklaces are cheap, but think about parades. People are selling glow necklaces for like three and four bucks, right? Well, guess what the vineyard does? They show up with 4,000 free glow necklaces, right? And we put our little band on it. It looks like an inviting people to church, and we give them out, right? Now, don't get me wrong. The people that sell things, they don't like us very much, (laughs) Because no, one, because no one buys their stuff. So we give away glow necklaces at the strategic glow necklace times. Um, uh, New, uh, excuse me, uh, what's the summer called? Fourth of July, Memorial Day, yes. Sorry, Fourth of July, fi- Fourth of July fireworks. Last year, we gave away 5,000 glow necklaces to families at the 4th of July fireworks. And how we do it, it's real simple. You say, well, Chris, how do you organize all that? This is what we do. We have people sign up. They're going to fireworks anyway. It's a, it's a natural thing that they do. We say, okay, if you're going to the fireworks, take 50 glow necklaces with you and give them to the people around you. So we give our glow necklaces a box, a tube of 50 glow necklaces to our people before July 4th. They take them, put the things on, and give them away. You know how long it takes? Five minutes. Five minutes, and we reach 5,000 people. Does that make sense? Consistent servant evangelism. Like, I believe in it. I read all of Shogren's books, and I will do it until I'm no longer pastoring this church because that's just what we do. We reach out. And you can use your groups. Like, we challenge our growth groups now. Do, do a servant evangelism every quarter that you meet. And, and, and just be creative. So I have here, we give away glow nexus, flowers, water bottles, ice pops, ice pops and ice cream sandwiches. They're big. You can give those away. They're real easy. Um, Halloween, what do we do for Halloween? Oh, Halloween. Uh, Halloween, we gave away, um, we ordered uh, off of uh, Oriental Trading. We ordered uh, uh, free gifts and we empowered people because normal people are turning their front doors off. We're like, you have kids coming to your front door. Like they're coming to you. Like, why? So we canceled. We no longer do a Halloween event. We use trick or treat. They're coming to your front door. We're like, turn on the floodlights. Turn on all the lights you can. We give them toys to give away. And then, and then we say, give them something that's, 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 that's uh, positive and healthy. So we encourage people to give away, like, uh, fruit gummies or something like that. We don't encourage. We're kind of, I'm a, like, health nut. So I really challenge our people to be healthy and take care of themselves and walk. And, and go to the gym and do those things because I value health and, and believe that it's important. Don't get me wrong. It, my wife yells at me every crumpy Sunday. But I said, there's got to be balance, honey. There's got to be balance. So the point is, what can you do here? Right? I just gave you 18 ideas. So just, you got to do it. You just do it. You make it a budget. You make it a part of your budget. Doesn't cost a lot. Right? Glow necklaces, 5,000 glow. Like you, you get 50, you get 100 glow necklaces for 20 bucks. It's cheap. I mean, it's just, it's dirt cheap and you reach 5,000 people. It's just a great way to reach out to people. Okay, number 10. Uh, sorry? We, we make an a, 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 a invite card and we put it on it so it looks like a necklace. So they wear it. Now, don't get me wrong, some people take it off, but they read it. So we actually hole punch it and put it on the glow necklace so it looks like a, a necklace. That's how we, that's how we attach it. Uh, number 10, hots. We had Mark Marks come in uh, this past October. Transformational for our church. What is hots? It's healing on the streets, real simple. You, it, it really simple, beautiful way to reach out to lost and hurting on the streets of your town and city. Right here is actually when Mark was in town. It's our hots event. Um, it, we don't really have, the struggle for us in this area is this. We don't really have, excuse me, we don't really have a high traffic foot area, but I know here in media you do, so it would work really good here. So we're actually working with the outlets. We're hoping to get in our outlet mall 
um, because they're really struggling. A lot of businesses are going out of there. So we're really praying that God opens us a door because on Saturdays, our big foot traffic is at the outlet malls. So we're really hoping that we can land in the outlet malls um, for our HOTS. But what is HOTS? It's just simply believing. Remember this morning I talked about believing? Our faith has been stretched beyond all faith since Mark has come to our church. And, and it's, it's amazing the deposit that he left in our church. Okay, I have a short video here. I actually filmed it. Um, I actually filmed it when Mark was praying for a lady. What you're going to see here is Mark was praying for a lady and her foot grew out so that her, her foot, she removed all back pain. She, she was doing backflips and cartwheels in our church. It was absolutely amazing. But the cool thing about it was Mark's not a hero. Okay, what you're going to see here is my daughter, Lily, remember who prayed for the woman with cancer? She was actually holding the foot of the lady as her foot grows out. And hopefully you can hear her voice, but all of our young people, my daughter, our junior hires, our, our high school groups, they were all around watching this. So suddenly they begin to catch. Remember, remember, I firmly believe evangelism, reaching out, healings, miracles, Jesus. It's, it, as much as it's taught, which we're doing this, it's caught. It's caught. Suddenly our young people caught this this passion to see healing and miracles happen. And, and like I shared last night, my daughter prayed for cancer. The woman was totally healed of esophageal cancer by a simple prayer where she walked up and said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And then left and went to her classroom. A week later, the woman calls, I'm healed. <laughs> went to the doctor. So anyway, let's, let's just watch this. Hopefully this video plays. Came and sat down. I said, now nah, everybody, um, we're going to pray and this man's leg is going to grow. You may, oh no, 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 I'm too tall as it is. I want to go, go, I want to be smaller, shorter. He says, okay. And the, the, the longer leg began to shrink back. It's amazing. So much fun. So, so, so watch this. Um, Father, thank you so much. Thank you. Ah, the very person. I want you to help me. Can you help me? Come over here. Move that microphone away. Lily. Come and kneel next to me. What's your name? Lily. Sorry? Lily. So this is Lily. Does everyone know Lily? Yes. Yeah. 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 Lily, put your hands under Heather's ankle. Yeah, you got that? Okay. Hold it. You got it? Mm-hmm. You got that now? Okay, because I want you to feel this and see. And I want Heather, you keep your eyes open. Yeah. Heather, God loves you so much. You're so precious to him and he cares for you. Father, thank you. Let your presence just rest in Heather. Now I speak to your spine, I command your spine be whole. I command all pain to go. I speak flexibility and freedom. Now in the mighty name of Jesus, I command this leg grow out, bone and muscle sinew right now. Here it comes. Come right out in Jesus' name. Now, right out. Here it comes. You got it? You got it? Keep holding it. Keep holding it. Thank you. More God. More. Watch. <laughs> More God. More Lord. You got it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Right up. Come, leg come right up. Bone and muscle sinew in the name of Jesus. Here it comes. Here it comes. Look. 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 Do you see that? Did you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I felt right. it you moving. You felt it moving. Did you see that? You wow. felt it moving. Yeah, I, f- I felt it like growing. Okay. Take, take your hand away. Now look. Look. Did everybody see that? <laughs> I'll show you. I'm going to show you where it was just a moment ago. Wow. Heather, just bend this knee just slightly. Keep going. It was about there. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah. it was. Does anyone wow. agree? Yeah. That's where it was. Look where your knee is. Wow. Straighten it out. Wow. Now, <laughs> the reason I, God's called me to do that is because. In some way, that's how faith works. When you're believing, you're expecting to see that movement, all right? God's just trying, trying to teach how faith works. And if you can apply that to any other part of the body when you pray and believe, then you're going to see that. God can make a leg grow. He can do anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have photographs on my, in my phone of a man with an orthopedic shoe in Oxford with a boot, the heel is that much longer. And his leg grew out on the streets of Oxford. He waddled across the road 
into the shoe shop right off trip, came out with a pair of Oxfords, new shoes he's never worn before, and he stood there in the streets of Oxford showing his orthopedic shoes and proudly wearing a pair of normal shoes he's, he's never worn before because there was a seat of learning. He said, words aren't going, going to cut it in, the, in this place. So it's a demonstration. Right. Check your backpack. The, cool thing, the cool thing about Mark was, he, you know, here he is bringing my daughter in, right? My daughter is literally in tears watching this foot grow out. Our, our middle schoolers, our middle school, you can stop that. Our middle schoolers, our middle schoolers are crying and weeping because they're like, they, they literally, one, one girl came into church and she was like, I'm crying because I asked God to see a miracle. I'm sorry, I just... And now, and, and now our young people are here, they are, they see these miracles yeah. and, and they want to do it now yeah. and they believe it. And our junior high group, they meet on Friday nights from six to nine. They're so radically on fire for God for miracles now that from eight to nine for an hour at the end of their like youth group, they do hits, healing in the sanctuary <laughs> and they invite their friends and they invite their parents and these kids pray for healing, and, and it's amazing. I shared the story, I shared the story last night. Our middle school leader, he's only been following Jesus for 18 months, and, and it's amazing what God is doing, but, but healing on the streets, I'll get to that one in a second. Um, healing on the streets is so simple. Like, like when I pray for people now, it's radically changed how I pray for people. Like Mark challenges us, no, you kneel. Like when you pray for someone and you're praying for someone's healing, you kneel. Like our church now kneels in humbleness, yeah. believing God's gonna move in people's lives. So we kneel down. So you make eye contact. You're not standing over people. Before you pray for healing for, for anything, you, you look at that person and you tell them how much God loves them. And you speak that love into their spirit. And what's it do? It builds their faith, right? Then you pray. I mean, it was just such this simple prayer. He just, even, even Mark helped our church just eradicate Christianese. Like, like, like we just pray for people in simple, practical words. And now we're just see, we're seeing this happen weekly in our church. Like that people just have this, this, this power and this desire to pray for people. And not just lead, not leaders, not our prayer team. Like, you don't understand. And I'm gonna, I'll do this tonight and I'll do this tomorrow. Like, our ministry time is our people praying for each other. Like, that's what we empower our people to do. And I teach them what it looks like. And don't get me wrong, I coach them. I teach them through how to pray for each other. I don't just say, hey, get out there and go crazy. I just, I teach them. But that's how we pray. Yes, Kathy? Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. In terms of hots, or in terms of everything. In terms of hots versus what do you mean by Christian youth? Like, what are you inviting us to consider as? What I what I yeah yeah no 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 I understand that I understand that. Yeah. It is, it is, because, yeah. Yeah, HOTS has, Hots has helped our, our church to be simple. It, it's being simple. Excuse me, and it's totally relying on God. Like, when we go out, we take our banner out. It's just a giant flag. You saw the picture of it. It says healing on it. We set up chairs, metal chairs. And we have, we bought kneeling things where you can kneel down so you're not hurting yourself on your knees. And basically you're just inviting people to get prayed for. Like they'll walk by and you introduce themselves. You start, is there anything we can pray for? We just want to pray for you. And we invite them to sit down. So in sitting down and in kneeling down, you're making eye contact. It becomes very simple. Okay. And what I mean by Christianese, it's just not, it's, I don't know. 
It's just praying with, it's praying in a language that someone outside of the church would understand. Does that make sense? Like, like we don't use the blood of Jesus. We don't talk about the Lamb of God. And, and it's just, God loves you. He wants to meet you. He wants to heal you. And, and as I'm praying for you, just, just and, in, and in our prayers, it's like I was praying for a foot last night, right? I don't know if she's here. Oh, there she is. Hi. So I, did, did you see what I meant when I prayed for you last night? Like I sat her down, and what's your name again? Stephanie, I sat her down. I just told her how much God loved her. I was kneeling. I picked her foot up. I gently put my hand on her, on her foot, and I said, in Jesus' name, I just speak to the pain to be gone. And, and I ask God that you make this foot whole, that you would bring it back into alignment of your best. And it's just language that's just simple, that, that she received, she understood, and then I just say, in Jesus' name. And then, I, how are you feeling? Is it different? Um, is the pain gone? And then if, uh, I, it's different, I felt it warm, and then I'll just pray a little more. But I'll just say, in Jesus' name, healing to this foot. Does that, does that make sense? So that, that's what I mean by that, Kathy. It's, it's just simple words, simple prayers. It's, it, it, you're not praying for like five minutes. It's actually like more like 20 seconds. It's just believing God in Jesus' name that healing is going to come. It, it's not this scripted prayer. You don't have to be a great prayer. I, I, need to, I need to know how to pray to pray. No, you don't. You know, for God to use you and for healing to come, just, just believe that God's going to bring healing that foot in Jesus' name and in amen, right? Like anybody can pray that prayer. It doesn't matter if you've been in a relationship with Jesus for, for three months, six months, or 22 years. In Jesus' name, healing Speak to the healing, amen. Okay, and again, it, it's just removing long, dynamic prayers that we all can do, you know, just be honest. That, that Man, we get in a zone and we're rolling. Yeah, come on, God, yeah. And, and we can do that, but we've really just simplified, we've really simpti- simplified our prayer life. And you guys know, you heard me last night, because I know Bruce is here, so I want to reiterate. Well, Bruce, you've been to our church. So you know our church is like founded on prayer. We have intercessory prayer. We have uh, prayer for people throughout the week. We have uh, prayer for our leadership team. We have uh, Sunday morning prayer teams. Like we, we do a lot of praying in our church, um, but we've really simplified our prayer life. Is that, it's even become transformational for my mother-in-law, who's our prayer team leader. It's just You just simplify your prayer life. So does that help? Okay. All right, so hot. And, uh, and then finally, my last one, Summer down by the river, right? So how this came about. For our 10th year anniversary, we wanted to do something big, right? We wanted to do something big. It's 10 year anniversary. And, and basically what we found was we have this river club, this club that has a bunch of houses along the river that's right near our church. It's like eight miles away. And they have this giant field that, that you can meet in. Like, it's just a giant grass field. And it's, on it in the, and it's a hill, so it's, like, sloped up. So we basically had Jesus stock down by the river. So for our 10th year anniversary, we did, we invited everyone. We, we, we rented the place, um, and we just had this giant event. And believe me, I was very inconvenienced. Very inconvenienced. Our staff worked a week to pull off this anniversary. And, you know, we, we, we got two tractor trailer flatbeds, put them together. That was our stage. We got the sound equipment out there. We, we had these giant tents for our kids' ministry. We had blow ups, you know, like uh, blow up uh, moon bounces. And, you, and we own our own moon bounces now. We don't rent them anymore. We bought them. All you got to do is seriously look on, look on eBay. You get them on eBay for like 400 bucks, they're $250 a time to rent. You can buy them on eBay. We found one on eBay for 400 bucks. We found another one for 300 bucks. We have three moon bounces now. P- people get rid of them all the time. So we have these moon bounces. We, we, so we created this environment, this festival environment, where we celebrate our 10-year anniversary, right? We had 1,200 people in a field. We worshiped. We did our normal Sunday morning thing, except we were outside. We had 88 people baptized, 
because the river's right there. So it's like natural. Here I am doing this big thing. I'm preaching. I'm, lead, I'm pulling the trigger. Bang. We went down the boat ramp. 88 people baptized in the, in the river, right? So we did that for anniversary. Last year, our leadership team was, we got to go back to the river. I was like, what? They're like, I said, that was an anniversary thing. They're like, no, you don't understand. We need to go back to the river. So I was like, okay. So, so last year we did it again. It wasn't an anniversary thing. We just call it down by the river, right? We had almost 1,500 people in a field down by the river. We baptized another 82 people in the river. And I'm, I'm not making this stuff up, man. I got hover, hover. We did one of those, uh, what are they call those hover things? Drones, yeah, it has all these pictures and stuff. And, um, and, and don't get me wrong, it's totally an inconvenience. I mean, I give the staff the next week off when we're done. I'm serious, I give them a week off because it is hard work. Because literally you're doing like Woodstock, you're doing this outdoor festival every year, but is it worth it? Absolutely. It's totally worth it. It's totally worth the cost, totally worth the budget. Um, this year, we simplified it. We just got food trucks to come, so we didn't have to prepare any food. And it was very low-key. We, like, dumbed it down. And, and, and it was incredible because what we're finding is we have, you know, the river community? We're transforming that river community. Like, we have all these families now coming to our church, and guess where their first time was? Down by the river. Down by the river. We played that song, you know that song, it's like, we played that, that was like a big deal, and, um, and, 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 and why do I say that? Because you can create a huge event that you point people to every year, and what is it? It's evangelism. It's totally evangelistic. It's totally evangelistic. It's plugging people. People will come to down by the river before they walk into our building, because it's not, it's not threatening right? It's in a field. You know, how can it go wrong? I'm outside. If I want to walk away, I can. If I get mad at him, I can yell. You know, it's no big deal. It's in a field. But can you do that? Yes. You can do that here. Is it an inconvenience? Yes. Is it a lot of work? Yes. But is it worth it? Yes. They're all yeses because it ties back into our win, right? It ties back into our win. So, um, that's been huge for us, and we, we're doing it this year. We already got the date, like the, the club that we go to. They love us. It's the best event they put on every year now. Like, they want us there every year. They, this year, they're talking about putting me out in the river. They want me to preach from the river on a barge. I'm like, Jesus did it. I'm, 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 I'm down, man. I'm like, heck yeah, not saying I'm Jesus or anything, but if he did it, I can do it. Like, come on. So I'm, a, I'm open for it if they want to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm into it. Um, so anyway, that's the nuts and bolts. That's HCV. That's who we are. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. And, and that's what's been transforming our community for the last, you know, three, four, five years. You know, and I shared this last night if you weren't here. I said, if you want to experience a little bit of revival, just show up at our church. Like, I, I, it's the closest thing to what people explain to me, because I believe revival is personal, that, that as your heart is revived and you're challenged and growing and reaching out, that revival naturally happens. But what people describe as revival, it happens in our church every weekend. And I believe that. Like, there's not a Sunday that goes by that I'm not expecting that revival is going to break out in our church and people are going to be saved, baptized, healed, miracles are going to be performed, because that's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. So I am finished. Any questions for part two? Part two, any questions? Um, just come over here and I will do my best to, to answer them and, uh, and point you to them. All right, looks like we've got a lot this time. This is great. Come on out. Yes. Taking notes. Please, go ahead. You said you ask people to commit to serve once a month. Yes. Do you not allow them to serve more than once a month? Oh, no. They can serve four times a month. I don't care. Okay. Heck, yeah. We let them serve as much as they want to serve. <laughs> because you realize that multi-gatherings, like, we have a lot of teachers that serve two, three times a month, but they have the opportunity to go to another. They're not missing church. Okay. It's you know what I mean? It's a starting point. Yeah, it's a starting point. It's what invites people in. It's non-threatening. We're like, we look at people. It's like 12 times a year. Come on. Anybody can do that. Okay, my second question, um, going back to the HOTS yes. things, 
Um, can you talk about what happens at the the kind of close of after you've prayed the simple prayers? Mm -hmm. um, do you do you sort of ask for feedback when it looks like a healing? What does it look like? And when it looks like not a healing, mm -hmm. how does that how does that close? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah, we just uh, we if, if if it's like your foot, like uh, I encourage them to get up and walk. Um, to leave their crutch, to test it out, if the give us a pain threshold. If it's healing, they're celebrating. If it's not healing, we explain. We just go into the already, not yet. Hey, you know, we're, we, we're living in the in-between. It's just kingdom theology. So we try to explain to them that, you know, that Jesus, yeah, he has come, but we still are living in a broken world. It doesn't mean that you're bad. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want to heal you. It's just that it, right now, it's just, it's just not happening. So we just are real simple and, and explain. That's a great opportunity to invite the kingdom theology into people so that it builds that bridge to the vineyard and what we believe. So we just kind of gently walk them through it and just let them try to walk or how is your pain threshold or is it better or worse and, and just kind of coach them through it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, have, uh, I have two questions. The first one Mark. is, um, Mark. you know, um, your, your church is very, seems very high energy and it's, I'm an extrovert, so I, I would really thrive in that environment. Yes. But I have introverts in my family. Yes. <laughs> and I could see them... Uh, retreating because of that. So yes. I'm just wondering, how do you care for introverts? How do I care for introverts? Well, they all know that I'm an introvert. I'm actually an introvert. Um, and when I take all of my personality tests, I'm an EI split. I used to be a very, very strong I. Like when I go, when I am not in front of you or I'm being used by God or I'm not connecting with the Holy Spirit, dude, I'm by myself. And, I don't, and other than my kids, I don't want you around being honest, man. I, 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 don't, I don't thrive in groups. So people relate that to me, and, and I teach that and share that a lot. So I, it kind of really helps the introverts kind of bridge over to the reality that it's okay to be an introvert. You know, so we really point our introverts to our growth groups, smaller settings. We really want you to be a part of our growth groups. When we do our big events, we try to give them opportunities to serve in small capacities, you know, they don't have to be talking to people. They don't have to, but they can be bringing out the backpacks. They can be organizing the Thanksgiving meals. So we try to give them tools where they'll thrive in smaller settings. Does that make sense? Because I totally relate to them. I'm an introvert. I really am. I am. And I'm not, I'm totally not making that up. Okay, remember, I failed public speaking in college. Not making that up. And my second question is in regard to you. Uh, you had had shared with us some of the challenges that you have with your current demographic yes. with, um, you know, struggles with, with racism. Yes. And so the, the question I have is, how do you, you. in that environment, um, uh, still continue to um, encourage a, a multi-ethnic church and be welcoming to others and sort of reflect them culturally within the church? Um, you just have to be very intentional. I'm very intentional in my Sunday morning messages that racism is a sin, that if, there's, uh, that if you have any uh, thought pattern that is judgmental towards another race or towards immigrants, it's, it's a sin. Like, it's just not God's best. So my people hear it monthly that we don't stand for racism. Yeah. We don't believe in it. It's not God's best. There is, should be no separation. We, ha we now have an Hispanic couple that God has brought to our church from uh, uh, Puerto Rico. Um, we're we're, we're very, being very intentional in launching a La Vina. Um, we're launching our La Vina by doing ESL. They got, again, we, we've, dis we've developed this relationship with our schools. Now I've introduced Nehumi and Daniel to the school system. They actually, it, the schools are actually going to advertise for us that we're going to have ESL in our building, and any student that's in ESL in the public schools, their parents are going to know that the Hub City Vineyard now has an ESL program for their parents. So again, we're being intentional to reach out to them because typically, typically our Hispanic culture is very hidden and closed off because they don't like to come out because they're afraid of being judged, ridiculed, fingers pointed at. So we're kind of going after them. 
I would love to know how you guys have dealt with the challenges, you know, how God's met you in the challenges of growth, because it sounds like for several years you had maybe like a normal church growth yes. you know, rate, and then all of a sudden it was just skyrocketing. Yes. So obviously there's lots of challenges that come with like rapid growth. You know, um, how have you, you know, how has God met you in those challenges? Uh, what have you, what have the, you learned yeah, through them? Yeah, the, yeah. Biggest, the biggest thing with, with growth that we found was um, you got to close the back door. Like, like when we had this initial explosion, our back door was so big that people were filtering out and, and moving out because we didn't have that, that flower. You know, that's why I was talking about that flower and why it's so important to us. When you experience this growth and you experience this outreach and your outward focus, suddenly we can walk people through the flower. Like, and that's why we have it in our cafe, right on our wall. We point people to it. If they go to the tiki bar, we have people that invite them to come over to see what it looks like to get people through it. So it's a little like a roadmap of being plugged into our church. When we didn't have that, our back door was huge, right? So since... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A back door. When I say back door, I'm so sorry. Well, four years ago, it was huge. Yeah. No, uh, when I say backdoor, what I mean by that, forgive me, when I, when I say backdoor, what I mean by that is people come into the church, they may begin a relationship with Jesus, but no one's caring for them, no one knows them, and they quickly leave, and we don't even know it. So they're in and out. Does that make sense? And they may have been baptized. But now with the flower, we're able to follow up with them. Anybody that gets baptized, we make sure they go to now what? All baptismal people are followed up with, reached out to, or given a certificate. Like we began to implement things in growth to close the back door because we were just losing people. We were bleeding it. Yes. That's why, that's why I challenge, yeah. Yes, and in January, I challenged all of our people. Again, this is a Sunday morning challenge. I'm very motivational. I said, look, we have 22 small groups, excuse me, growth groups right now. We call them growth groups. Um, our goal by the, by the end of 2018 is to have 48. So people know our goal. And I explained to them why. I explained to them this is why. Or is God calling you to lead a small group? Will you host a small group? And slowly we've been bumping up. We're, I think we're at like 28 this quarter. So we're, we're moving in the right direction. But I cast that vision. Does that make sense? I cast that vision. So a flower is important. That discipleship wheel. Whatever you guys come up with, it's vital for growth. I mean, just vital. Plus, it just helps the people steer to, this is what it looks like to walk through a relationship with Jesus at BRV. Did I answer your question? I don't have a, a question. I have a statement. <laughs> is that allowed? <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, I have approximately, I don't, I lost count to 12 grandchildren, different ages. And I'm 81, I have the old time religion type of yep. going to church. They don't go to church with us. Mm -hmm. But this is so well needed. They would go to the type of church that you do. The shirt, the whole thing, I, I like it myself. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Hey. That, You're uh, welcome, <laughs> have it. I'll give, you the, I'll give you the web link, I'll show you who we order from, go for it. And God bless you, really, really appreciate. I want my grandchildren to go also. Thank you very much. Yeah. Amen. All right. Yeah, let's thank Chris. Chris, uh, we're, we're very, very grateful. Chris will be speaking at all our services this weekend, and that'll, that, we're excited about that. Uh, you're certainly welcome if you're not from our church. Uh, you're welcome if you are from our church. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Well, we're done, but what I'd like to ask Chris is if everybody could stand up now, just stand.